In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everybody. Good evening to everyone joining us for Mass as well at home, hoping you're all well. I'm offering this Mass for you, the people of the parish. We extend a special welcome this evening to the members of Council 584 of the Knights of St. Columba. Justin, the Grand Knight, will be speaking to us after Holy Communion about the work of the Knights. God calls each one of us in the ordinary circumstances of our lives. As we begin our celebration, we pause to reflect on our response to God's call and our willingness to be disciples of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you call us to follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you replace our fears with hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you command us to spread the good news of God's reign. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Every prophet had to have testimony of his calling by God so that the people would know he was genuine. The stories of most of the prophets' call have survived, but today's is especially dramatic. Isaiah is overwhelmed by the splendour of his vision as the angelic throng cry out. The vision is intended to overpower Isaiah, to test his worthiness and his obedience to God's mission. Like Jeremiah and Jonah who follow after him, Isaiah protests his inadequacy on account of unclean lips. An angel is sent to clean them, after which Isaiah has no further excuses and he accepts God's call to be his messenger. Despite the drama of his own calling on the road to Damascus, it seems that St Paul was never quite sure of his standing with the other apostles. He professes the same faith about Jesus as them, and he emphasises the importance of their having seen and witnessed to Jesus when he was on earth. We don't know if St Paul himself ever saw Jesus, but he attributes his own calling to what happens on the Damascus road, and he calls himself the least of the apostles. Nevertheless, what matters to him is that he shares in the same grace that they enjoyed. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord seated on a high throne his train filled the sanctuary. Above him stood seraphs, each one with six wings. 
and they cried out one to another in this way, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundations of the threshold shook with the voice of the one who cried out, and the temple was filled with smoke. I said, What a wretch state I am in. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have looked at the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. With this, he touched my mouth and said, See now, this has touched your lips. Your sin is taken away. Your iniquity is purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, Here I am. Send me. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, Before the angels, I will bless you, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. All earth kings shall thank you when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the Lord's ways. How great is the Lord! How great is the glory of the Lord! You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hand. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, the gospel that you received and in which you are firmly established, because the gospel will save you only if you keep believing exactly what I preach to you. Believing anything else will not lead to anything. Well then, in the first place, I taught you what I had been taught myself, namely that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared first to Cephas and secondly to the twelve. Next, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James and them to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me too. It was though I was born when no one expected it. I am the least of the apostles. In fact, since I persecuted the church of God, I hardly deserve the name apostle. But by God's grace, that is what I am. And the grace that he gave me has not been fruitless. On the contrary, I, or rather the grace of God that is with me, have worked harder than any of the others. But what matters is that I preach what they preach, and this is what you all 
believed. The word of the Lord. Let us all stand to honor the gospel acclamation. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was standing one day by the lake of Gennesaret with a crowd pressing round him, listening to the word of God, when he caught sight of two boats close to the bank. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, it was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and pay out your nets for a catch. Master Simon replied, We worked hard all night long and caught nothing, but if you say so, I will pay out the nets. And when they had done this, they netted such a huge number of fish that their nets began to tear. So they signalled to their companions in the other boats to come and help them. When these came, they filled the two boats to sinking point. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were completely overcome by the catch they had made. So also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. But Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on it is men you will catch. Then bringing their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things that as a priest in a parish you get used to confronting is people's sense of unworthiness. Frequently when asking someone to help in a certain way, people say that they're not worthy to do a certain task. I have to say that this response doesn't deter me because I've been there myself. There's not a priest on the planet that hasn't had to face their own unworthiness when contemplating God's call. Each and every person can honestly say they're not worthy of their vocation, but then where would we be? To those who prefer to decline when there's a need for help, I always say, if not you, who? And if not now, when? People often complain about cliques in a parish, but that's often because it's the same people who are willing. Tonight in the Gospel, we hear the call of St. Peter, and this story is mirrored in the first reading with the call of the prophet Isaiah. As we hear, both Isaiah and Peter were reluctant to respond to God's call. Peter was an experienced fisherman, so despite what his experience and better judgment tell him, when Jesus asks him to pay out his nets again, he does it. He prefaces his agreement to Jesus' re request with a little scepticism, but he does what Jesus asks and is rewarded for his faith. When Peter says, leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man, he's being honest about his faults and who he is. But Jesus tells him not to be afraid. Though both the first reading and the Gospel follow the same theme, the Gospel broadens out from the narrower expectations of the first reading. In the first reading, a religious person, Isaiah, is called in the temple. A religious person is being called in a place where we might expect to encounter God. But in the Gospel, a sinful man is called in the ordinary circumstances of his life. In the Gospel, all Peter does is respond to Jesus' initiative, and it's this last point that's the important one. Jesus comes to Peter at his boat and invites him to follow him. 
And God meets each one of us where we are. At our baptism, the Lord called each one of us, and we were called as the people we are, not the saints we aspire to be. As the lives of the apostles teach us, sinfulness is not a barrier to discipleship, which is why they're so precious to us. Like Peter, we may want to say, leave me, Lord. But despite our weaknesses and shortcomings, in Jesus we find the strength to be all that he calls us to be. All we need to be is to be open to the call. Please stand. We pray the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus says, do not be afraid, and so we're encouraged to make our needs known. that the church may respond courageously to God's call to preach the good news to all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That God may, may continue to bless Her Majesty the Queen as she marks her Platinum Jubilee this year. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us that all the peoples of the world may hear God's call to salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That those overcome by a sense of unworthiness may know God's love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That all of us here may find God and heed his call in our everyday lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In this moment of silence, we remember those needs kept in the quiet of our hearts. We pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died and whose funerals take place this coming week. Jackie Mason, and John and Kathy Lovell. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Almighty God, you call us before you this day. Hear these our prayers, for we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Whilst the gifts of bread and wine are prepared, we'll sing hymn number 509, Take My Hands. 
Take my hands and make them as your own, and use them for your Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim every way your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, his assistant bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I'm going to invite just in the grand night of our local council to come and speak to you for a few moments. Good evening. Don't worry, I'm not going to keep you long. So in April this year, last year, I went to Malawi, Africa, the country which I am originally from. I went there for a funeral for my dad. I went to bury him. After the funeral, I went to the local hospital for my parish in Malawi. 
and I was taken to the children's clinic. And when I went there, I found two boys, Patrick and James. These two boys were struggling for their life. They were connected to breathing machines, brand new breathing machines. So I spoke to the parents, I encouraged them, I prayed with them, and the next day I was going to catch my plane coming back to England. So I decided to pass by the hospital just to see how they were. So I did my little shopping for the parents and I went there. And as I entered the clinic, I found two empty beds where the children were uh, sleeping. And my heart sank, knowing or thinking of what could have happened. As I walked through the ward to find a nurse, there was a lady at the end of the corridor who lit up when she saw me and she came straight at me. It was James's mother. The two children were okay. They were breathing on their own and they were discharged from that intensive care unit. You see, those two breathing machines that saved those children were donated by my brothers, the Knights of St. Columba, Council 584. I have 16 brothers. That's what we call each other, because we are brothers. My name is Justin Malewezi, and I am a Knight of St. Columba. And uh, I don't know why they gave me the duty to lead them, <laughs> but that's what I'm doing at the moment. So we are brothers, we pray together, we listen and we encourage each other. We raise money to help the people in need, like little James and Patrick. We also send sick, sick pilgrims to Lourdes to meet Our Lady to get her blessings. There is only 16 of us in our council. Can you imagine how, if we were many, what we could accomplish? So that's why I'm standing here speaking to you today. If you know any man that you think might join us or just know a bit more about us, please, we're going to be standing at the back. Have a word with us. There's no commitment. We just talk to you about it and perhaps you can pass on the word or if that's yourself, just get to know us and perhaps in time you might join us in this work. We also have a project at the moment, a daffodil flower project. We've planted flowers to commemor commemorate those who have passed on and if you like the name of your loved one to be included, please, you can just write their name and put it in an envelope, put in a little do donation and pass it on to the sacristy. There will be more information about that project later. So please, come to talk to us and hopefully we can develop a relationship which Christ encourages us to do. We are the Knights of St. Columba. Thank you very much for listening. I think I'm right in saying that the Daffodil Project is something that's taking place in the ground of St. Philomena's. People wanted to do something in some way to mark those who have died, particularly during the pandemic. So I think in the grounds of St. Philomena's, to the right of where you walk by the front door, a load of daffodils have been planted. So please God, they'll come up when spring comes. And so you can donate uh, some money and then the daffodil will be in memory of your deceased loved one. So if you see the nights when you leave mass this evening, thank you. Please stand. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, Grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for Mass this evening, those of you here in church and those of you at home. Bye, God bless.